Hello and welcome to Theorycraft. I'm Ben, he's Jack, and we're, yes, yes, we are talking about Mars Attacks this week, as Jack's just referenced to the communication, which, this is, that's one of many issues I have with the film, but I think the entire film itself is literally just a piss take of sci-fi as a whole, like, there is no attempt whatsoever in the entire movie to make it anything spectacular other than just being a giant pain in the backside to all sci-fi lovers. But then that being said, it is a great movie nonetheless as just a random Tim Burton thing because with Tim Burton, I do wonder what the hell he is on when he comes to doing movies. Besides the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, I don't think there's anything relatively sane enough compared to his other films, because you got Edward Scissorhands, where you've got a guy that's hands are literally made of scissors. You've got Beetlejuice, which is just... It's an amazing movie, but it's still utter randomness. And then you get... What was it? Batman Forever or Batman and Robin that he did? I can never remember which one. No, I think it was, Bat I think it was Batman Forever. Yeah. And again, that... That entire movie, I swear, he was definitely on something very strong. But yeah, even though the guy does look like he invented Percocets, <laughs> I think Percocets came from him. Bloody hell! <laughs> Literally, it's just yeah. But yes, Mars Attacks is definitely a film for all the ages. I mean, it was back in 1996 this film came out. And despite that, the CGI in it was pretty decent for what it was. Obviously, it's been remastered over the years. But I also do think the CGI was bad on purpose. Yeah, because there I, are... I, I thought it was like, yeah, an old school troll. I thought, this is this is deliberate. This has to be very deliberate. Well, I mean, there's like, there's the, at the very beginning, you get a scene where you got two farm folk like saying, oh, Oh, gee whiz, I can smell barbecue. You having a barbecue, Bob? And it's like, no. And then all of a sudden, you just see a massive herd of all of these cows just on fire, which I can show you as this gif. You just see, <laughs> you just see this, but the, it's so obviously bad, the CGI from this little clip alone, that I just find absolutely brilliant because... Oh, no. Just the keyframing is lovely just because it's so crap. <laughs> yes. Like, there was no attempt of blending it in. There was no attempt at trying to make it look realistic. If anything, it just looks like they had someone running through the cows itself with, like, a red smoke flare in between it all to try and trace it, and then they just plopped on the fire on top. Yeah. <laughs> but Because the thing is, why would the why would the smoke be red? It shouldn't be red, should it? I mean, yes, it's very bloody, but it shouldn't be red. It would probably be more black than anything else. Yeah, exactly. And like just more like yeah, and just more yellow, just more yellow and orange shoes. Exactly. But the entire, I just love the fact that this entire movie is just loosely based off a card game back in the nineteen sixties. That's all this film is. Like, there, it's not a big anti. I mean, it's become quite a big thing in comics because they got their own comic series. But it's just. There was no actual history to it. It was just a card game. I don't know if it was just after Jumanji came out or it was just around the same time, but it's such a random movie. There are so <laughs> many little inconsistencies. It's a brilliant movie, don't get me wrong. But it's such a sh it's such a strange movie. There's so many big names in it as well, which I find brilliant. Oh, but at God, the same like point... If you just go on Wikipedia, the list is just a mile long. <laughs> well, I mean, let's see, which page did I have it in? Yeah, I got the list of it here. So we got like Jack Nicholson as the president of America. You Glenn got Glenn Close. Close as the first lady. You got a young Kira Knightley as their daughter. The list goes on. Like, there's so many big names in it, but then not all of them survive to the end, which I find even more hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I. The one thing I do love about it most of all is the the aesthetic for both the aliens and all their tech and the attitude of all the like characters within the movie feels very 1950s. Well, it's kind of very like Looney Tunes itch, I thought. There's that too, but it's like at the very beginning of the like age of sci-fi where you had the really clunky robots and the really weird spheres. And it was just the 
the sheer idea of everybody. I mean, you got Piers Brosnan smoking a pipe like a nineteen fifties professor. <laughs> But he, luckily, he doesn't have like an American accent. Thank God for that. He stays British, but I swear it's over the top British. Oh yes, yes. it's like I say, oh chap, sort of thing. And <laughs> it's just there are so many cringy things in this film. It's just beautiful. It, it just looked like it was even taking the piss out of stereotypes as well, which is pretty fun. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got Sarah Jessica Parker in it, who's the most ditzy blonde chat show host anchor woman that you could ever imagine i mean that it gets to the point where she's got like a mini chihuahua as well as her like dog of choice it's the most typical ditzy blonde thing to do i mean this is the one scene i could never wrap my head round why they did it what the point of it was but for whatever reason she gets abducted by the aliens and they decide to bobby, body swap her and the dog. So her dog's head is on her body, and the dog's body's now got her head. But this is just so what? What the f Just why? Just because. It's just <laughs> utter nonsense. I mean, it's a beautiful movie, but. I mean, you, got... like, you know, with like the aesthetic, like the way the aliens actually look with like the domes and everything. But yeah. Just, you know, with like the skulls. The thing that came to my mind, first of all, like, you know, the skulls look out very much like they look all, they look all floaty, like they're two separate shots. Yeah, I've actually yes. got an image, if you bear with me two seconds. Let's yeah. have a look. I'm not sure if anybody, like, watching this or, uh, or like, listening to this at some point, if you've ever seen uh, Jeff Dunham, he does, like, all that comedy stuff with the puppets. Have you ever seen him? Yeah, yeah, I know who you mean. Yeah. He looks, yeah, like these aliens, they look like the framework of Ahmed, the dead terrorist. Yes, he does. Yes. Because it's got, because it's the big eyes as well. I just realised that. It, it looks like that puppet. It looks uh, so much like the puppet. It does indeed. But it's just, yeah, it's so bizarre. I mean, it's such a bizarre movie, this, like, the, I can't really explain it any other way, but it's just being so strange. Uh, I... It's just like this, just this scene here, just when like you have the guy who's doing like the whole translation from so, like English to alien, alien yes. to English, and you see the guy releases the dub, and the alien, <laughs> the leader of the aliens gets freaks out. He goes, <laughs> but just yes. use the freaking dub. <laughs> well, the thing that I love about this scene is like this is the first time they meet the aliens, so they're trying to translate, and they obviously got it wrong. That's what I thought. But at no point in the entire movie do they attempt to retranslate any of it. No. Because they keep saying because they keep translating it to English saying, We come in peace, and then they keep blasting everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> at no point nobody tried to retranslate or try to rework anything no, to try and understand no. what was going on. No. <laughs> like they they got this irrational fear of birds. Which I don't know if it's just the a random nod to the idea of the um uh it was a really weird horror movie really early on in the nineteen fifties called The Birds. Yeah, I, I don't know, know if it's a mean. nod to that or whether it's just a random choice, of I, course. I was I was thinking that. Or I was thinking of um I was thinking of something else, but I thought maybe it could be a nod to the birds, you know, because I think it was well, what was the director's name? Uh Hitchcock? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it could be, and it's like just showing a bit of inspiration for that director from Tim Burton. But mm. yeah, like this film, just like from everything I've seen of it, I've watched as much as possible, and I just, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit speechless. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt watching it. I made loads of notes, but it's one of those films that you just, no matter how you try and review it, like we are now. It doesn't give it justice. Like this no. entire movie is just an absolute satire. I mean, there's so many random scenes. There's like, there's these two black kids that are in an arcade and they're like playing these space invader type games. Yeah, Somehow, yeah. out of the logic of this movie, when two aliens get knocked down, they're able to pick up their blasters and use them against the other aliens in the street. Now, I don't know if that's slightly racist or whether it's just 
weird plot logic, the fact that two black kids can pick up any gun and shoot the... <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> I sure as heck hope not. I'm hoping not too, but it's just... It's such a funny thing because like, there's so many random tangents in this movie because their dad is working in Las Vegas as this like guy that's dressed up as King Tut or something because there's like a whole yes, thing in yeah, yeah. there's a whole thing in Las Vegas where they're obsessed with the Egyptians and he's like that's one place that they get invaded by and so his dad is trying to make his way to his sons to back in uh, Washington DC to try and save them from the invasion. So he just randomly makes a ragtag group of people. You got, I can never remember the actress's name, but you got a random redhead who's like an obsessed, like a most hippie woman you would ever meet. Your fiance would probably love her because she's obsessed with crystals. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because like crystals, yeah, in our house, look, we got them all over the place. Have a look at this. <laughs> But it's so funny, like, this red-headed woman is, like, on her car in the scene where they, that scene we had earlier, where they translate the aliens, and she's literally praying with the crystals to the aliens, because it's like, oh, new life, and she's just got crystal in her hand, and then everything starts going to shit, and she's like, ah! And then somehow she ends up with the ragtag group of this guy that looks like King Tut for Las Vegas. you got Danny DeVito as this random gambler yeah. that for whatever reason, is like trying to make it through with them, but he gets shot midway through. And then you get Tom Jones. <laughs> it's not Tom Jones playing somebody. It's Tom Jones as Tom Jones, because he's randomly rehearsing or he might be on stage performing to people, singing one of his many classics. And then his like backup singers get swapped out by the Martians. <laughs> And oh, you just see God, these you see these like four and a half foot, maybe five foot at the most tall Martians just randomly going ah, 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 ah. it's just you oh. see this like he turns around and he's just like, What the hell is this? And then it, all hell just breaks loose. It's yes. brilliant. But I don't know why. It's the fact whenever you hear a British person in an American movie, it sounds so bizarre. But the fact that he's Welsh as well makes it even funnier. I don't know if it's just me, <laughs> but it's just the fact that you get so many American people that you get yeah. used to hearing the American voice, and then you hear, and all their boils, sort of voice. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, no. But it, <laughs> it just made me laugh all the people to have as, like, because I'm trying to think, who else in the 90s would have been a big singer enough to be in Las Vegas? You could have had Cher... <laughs> That would have been amazing to have Cher. <laughs> I mean, you could, like I say, you could have had like, Cher, you could have had Shakira, but you have Tom Jones of all people. And then you just like, obviously, yeah, like Michael Jackson was still big back then. And uh, then you could have had like anybody, like even Diana Ross. Can you imagine? Yes. That? Oh, <laughs> God. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Um, God. Just singing songs on YouTube. It's not unusual to get copyright struck. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> but yeah, try not try not to claim that YouTube. <laughs> but you, you got, the best bit of all is like you actually have Jack Black in it. This is like the days before Tenacious D and all these bits and bobs. But it's so bizarre because this is I think this is like his very early on stuff. Yeah. He plays like such a random character and he dies within like the first 10 minutes of the movie. <laughs> I mean, the, it's such the way these aliens get defeated in the end, I find the most hilarious oh, of all. It, I mean, like it's just before we came on, I watched that scene of where, like, the, when you got the old granny who's listening to music on her headphones and they're wheeling in that gun, like, cabinet. yeah, do you remember that? And then. Like, they, the music starts coming out of the speaker and their heads explode. Yeah, let me see. <laughs> yeah, just like uh, this green blood spurting out in their domes. Yeah, it's... If I can find the right image. There we go. But it's... I mean, it's such a bizarre... <laughs> it's... The song itself is such a weird one. It's called Indian Love Call. 
by Slim Whitman. Never heard of him. Never have I, but the look on his face, he looks oddly like what um, Iron Man used to look like in the very early on comics. I was going to say, for a minute, I thought you was going to say the early on the early on series when... No. Yeah, like, do you remember when we spoke about that months and months and months ago with the dome thingy? But, yeah. yeah. I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah. But... <laughs> I just love the idea that the the Americans, the most typical way that they st that try to interact or try to like fight the war is they send nukes up to the Martians. Of course. But the thing is, right, the Martians, what they do is they grab the missile midway through the air and they siphon it through a pipe and then it goes up to the Martian building and they inhale it like it's some sort of cigarette and they just go... <clears throat> and it's just like, okay... It's it's like he's like you said earlier. It's very Looney Tune esque, which I can understand why because obviously Tim Burton he probably lives in like Looney Tune land. But <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, yeah, well, definitely. Like I think we've established Tim Burton is not in touch with reality whatsoever. No, I don't think he's part of this. I think he's part of the fifth dimension or something stupid. But <laughs> it's it's but, just this. Is, but it's just like what makes this film like so bad yet so damn good. Like from everything I've watched of it, I can't stop watching it. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> it's such. It's one of those movies that you have to watch as part of the history of how like sci-fi has evolved over the years because it's such a naff movie. Like the whole point of it is just taking a pee out of what sci-fi can be. Yeah, but you get so many random ideas within it that I struggle to comprehend as to what, how they even got the movie going when it's such a bizarre movie. Like, whenever someone gets blasted by the guns, they don't even explain why some of the skeletons are green and some of them are red, but the blasters all admit red rays. Yeah, which is like when you see, like, at the start, when, like, it was, like, you know, the come in peace scene? They yeah. Shoot, like, the, the general, like, one of the, uh, you shoot, like, the general officer, and he transforms into, like, the skeleton, like, in red and everything. But then I see, in, like, a load of other scenes transform into green. I'm like, okay, how is this working? I don't understand. No, I don't think anyone really understands, to be honest. But it it's such a silly movie. It really is. But let me see if I can find the right image because it's well, always yeah. It's kind of like if Jerry Springer like decided to like if he quit doing his series, which he has, but if he quit doing his series and made a film, he would think this would be it. <laughs> so we got there's the scene where Jack Black literally just dies. He grabs the American flag, and then it's all like, of a sudden it's just I, like <sighs> I didn't I didn't realize it was Jack Black at first. Yeah, I didn't yeah. Realize. It... I mean, what else have we got? There you go. There's a better one of Jack hey. Black where it's just he plays such a typical redneck in this entire like him and his family. He got his dad, his mum, and his grandma and his brother. His brother and grandma are really close, and the rest of them just sound like typical hillbillies. <laughs> but there's a scene where Jack Black's in the RV with his family trying to race build his rifle, which is such an American thing, regardless. But it's just such a stupid thing that he dies because he is like just part of the army. But his brother, who's such a hippie, is the one that survives and is the one that finds the means to destroy the aliens, which is the song. Yeah, well, to be honest, it is definitely like for sure, like you said, they're definitely they're definitely taking the Mickey out of American culture as well. <laughs> yes, there we go. So that's everybody there. That's the scene where he's just trying to speed build the rifle. <laughs> But it's the look on his face as well. It's like, <laughs> and then that's him with his girlfriend sending him off to fight the aliens. Oh. That's the grandma, oh, and it's Jesus. so. <laughs> she, the thing is though, I think that actress is still around. She's been in loads of things as like a random old granny. No, what is? Yeah, what is, is that just her main role in films? Just random well, granny in the background. Pretty much, she's been in lots of things as like a random granny character, but she's been acting since the early part of the well, probably nineteen thirties. Yeah, 
so she's been around a long time. I don't think she's passed away, but I could be wrong. Anybody watching, you're more than welcome to try and figure out what's going on. I'm just saying, so you know how old she looks here? Like, I'm 24 years old, so this yeah. is 24 years ago. Yeah. I just... I love the oblivionness of this scene where she's oh, just sat there brilliant. chilling to the music, and then they just wheel in like this massive cannon. You see them just like... <laughs> It's so stupid, this movie. It's a good stupid. It's just... <laughs> this is the end of the movie that I love most of all. you got a random mariachi band. Because? <laughs> yeah, but they're doing the national anthem as well. And it's just like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> like, what is the context? It doesn't make any sense. Because you get, well, you got Natalie Portman there, like, giving the young lad the Medal of Valor, because he found a way of destroying the aliens by just going around the, like, the area on his truck with the music. But it's uh, just the sheer awkwardness of the entire thing. Like, God, she looks so young there. I but know. she just looks so disinterested in being in the film at the same time, like she always does. Like she knows, like, oh, this film is rubbish, but I'm going to get paid regardless. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, there's... That's probably the only bit of actual emotion she has where she's slightly shocked about the invasion, and that's about it. Yeah. Oh, like, just it was brilliant to see, like, just seeing. Oh my god, what is this scene again? This is the scene where it's through the point of view of the Martian woman. Now that I love most of all. Like, <laughs> so basically, they mock up a way of invading the White House by dressing up a. Like, they make a bodysuit of sorts, like like animatronic, so they look like an attractive female. But the style of the female is so over the top nineteen fifties; it's absolutely brilliant. Like, do we have a fuck with that. I do indeed. Do that. That. This is it. It's just... Oh. <laughs> like, it's so brilliant because the hair itself is meant to be 1950s style, but it's also trying to disguise the fact that it's obviously they got massive brains. I, but I, think, I, remember seeing, I think I remember seeing something like this on RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> pretty much. Like, this, is what I, this is what I love, is I swear this is where RuPaul got most of his inspiration or some of the people of that way inclined get their inspiration <laughs> because not to be harsh and i'm sure people on twitch or youtube won't like my wording here but it's very tomb raider-esque the boobs like it's not normal it's very it it almost looks like in Tri austin like triangles <laughs> Well, it almost looks like you know in Austin Powers where you got the evil, the baddie girl where she's got like guns in the nipples. Yes, yeah. That yeah, it reminds yeah. me. <laughs> it's just, but it's also the way that this they make her move is she doesn't technically walk; she glides everywhere. Yeah. But no one caught on, and it's just that the guy that I showed you earlier on is like the most pervy guy, but he works for the White House, which in itself makes me laugh because obviously it. If anything, it's kind of like Harvey Weinstein before everyone knew about it all. Like it's such oh, a, no. it's such a pervy thing. Like this little guy is trying to hit on any woman that he comes across, and the first one he comes across is obviously the Martian woman. But it's such a funny thing because like he starts trying to flirt with her and he starts snogging her, and they go deep diving into the sofa and then spring back up and he's like, "Oh God, you're you're amazing!" And there's like no facial expression on this like actress at all. Like it's so brilliant. And they deep dive again and come back. Oh my God! And there's like no facial. It's so funny. Oh God! I oh, just I can't wait to watch the entirety of this thing. I can't wait. I I think I'm gonna have to treat you indeed to watching this for Halloween. If we can all do it for Halloween, you're gonna have to watch it because it's just such a bonkers movie. <laughs> but the thing that I do love is the cleverness of how they made the Martians be able to breathe within like that whole concept of being the Martian lady. So the reason why they couldn't breathe in our normal air is because there's not enough nitrogen because there's more nitrogen on Mars than there is on Earth. So they they give a random sci-fi explanation in this movie where the reason why she keeps chewing is like the gum itself is actually pure nitrogen. That's how the aliens still able to breathe 
while being ah, as a, it's yeah, a random yeah. little clever idea. Okay, yeah, it, I see it. But it's just like a random five minute sci fi thing, and then they just move on. Yeah. But it's just. It's so, it's so weird, this entire thing. I mean, what else have I got written down here? I mean, there's the bit. Well, I mean, they defect. I don't know why, but every single sci fi American movie has to deface Mount Rushmore or the White House for whatever reason. Like it's always those two. Because which, we are America. <laughs> yes, but the logic being is, how would they know that's such an important significance to us? To them, it could mean anything. Well, exactly. I just don't. I don't understand why that would be so. Uh, like, how would yeah? How would these Martians even know? Like, they could have just picked anywhere. I don't know. I don't know. It's. <laughs> this this movie's probably not designed to make any kind of sense. So no, no, that's definitely true. I mean, towards the end of the movie, there's so many things that they left on a cliffhanger. Like Pierce Brosnan's character and Sarah Jessica, Je Sarah Jessica Parker's have this weird love interest thing, but they both get disembodied by the Martians as experiments, but they still survive at the end of the movie. This is literally it. Like they're both. On the floor with just their heads like attached to whatever the brace things are. And then because of the inertia of the ship, because it's crashing onto the earth, <laughs> they end up going in for a snog. And then that's it. Like they don't they don't do anything more. Like they're just like, oh yeah, we're still alive, but we're just heads. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's such nonsense, this movie. It really is. There isn't many films like this that actually leave me quite speechless. So I don't have anything to say. <laughs> There's so no. much I want to say, but I just I don't know. You, <laughs> yeah, you don't know at the same time. I mean, this is what I love. I mean, obviously, it's been remastered since, but it's the CGI <laughs> of that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so brilliant. Like, it's... There's no real explanation other than the fact that the Martians just wanted to experiment. But it's just, just... just because they could, that's all. But the thing that I would have thought would have been more funny is if they'd had like the voice of the dog stood on the do on that bit there and have Sarah's voice on the dog's head on her body, if that makes sense. That would have been a lot funnier. So that when she speaks, it would be a dog bark. Yes, pretty much. Or can you imagine if she, or can you imagine just for a funny little tidbit in the film is that if she needs a wee, she don't go to the toilet. She like wees up a flagpole or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, the thing is, it's like she's meant to be, I don't know if she's married or in a relationship with Michael J. Fox because he's meant to be like this oh, news anchor. Yeah, he's in it, yeah. Yeah, he's in it as well. He's meant to be like a news reporter. I would have loved at the end of the movie if like he looks after her and there's a bit where she just randomly has to go shit on the ground and it's like, oh, <laughs> God's sake. <laughs> or so something like that. Because like, I don't know. I can't remember if he dies in it or not. Like There's so many random bits of the movie because it's so just out Bonkers. there. This, yeah. This entire movie is just utter nonsense. There, <laughs> There's nothing to it other than it just being... I don't see as you have to like remake this film. I think just for how bad it is, I think it's just a gem on its own. <laughs> but I mean, this is what I love is how obviously 1950s or 1960s style this is. You've got the weird spherical seats which nobody can get in or out of properly. You've got her in neon clothing, him with the bag, the pipe where he looks so obviously pompous British. It's just beautiful. It's just. <laughs> It's so stupid, this movie. Like, it's, a, it, it's a gem. It's a gem. But, yeah. Like, this bit as well is, like, they hold each other close, like, oh, save me, save me. And he's just like, oh, I say. It's just, <laughs> there you go. So the, there's the kiss scene. But it's just like, <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah, it's, ah, 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 ah. Like this is him like doing an autopsy on them, and the thing is with the suits, the decontamination suits in the like the autopsy room, it reminds me of Space Odyssey. 
Oh yeah, Space Odyssey 2001. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just the the over like spherical dominess of it all, but it's also it also looks like a light bulb. Yeah, well, I just because you got like, like I just think it's drawing a lot of like inspiration from like what it used to look of what um like designs of spacesuits used to look like before like obviously like the USA and like the uh and the Soviets were like battling to get to space. And it's just like the whole stereotypical, like sort of cartoons and drawings and posters. I love all the inspiration and just how much it takes the mick out of Americans. It's just, it's, it's fabulous. It's a jewel. It's so brilliantly bad. I mean, that is why oh I love, <laughs> yeah, there's no explanation as to why they like dissect Again, him. And... Just because. <laughs> But, to be fair, I mean, the fact that, obviously, back then, CGI wasn't much because they'd only just figured out, to a degree, how to really green screen stuff. It must have taken them God knows how long to try and key out all the, like, right bits to try and blend it right. But <laughs> Yeah, because it would obviously be in, like, a green screen, like, jumpsuit thing. Yeah, exactly. It's just... <laughs> it's so stupid. Stupidly weird. I mean, what else have we got for reference images? Like, there's him in the White House with his pipe. You got a random sassy black woman just because. You got, there we go. There's the hero of the day. It's just like a typical teenager that just didn't want to be there. But he is. Like, at the end of the day, he's the one that ends up saving the day because he finds out that the song. But there's the fact. That they found out the song is just by sheer randomness is because she just tugs on the cord too much and it unplugs it from the vinyl record player and that's it. So if yeah. she didn't have put, if she didn't swing out of her chair too quick, it wouldn't have unplugged. She would have been vaporized and that would have been the end of the movie. Everyone would have died. Oh God knows, I don't know. <laughs> there we go. There's Danny DeVito. <laughs> but it's just. But like he's on the blackjack. He's but he's on the blackjack table playing roulette. I can't remember which, and he's winning. But everyone else is distracted by the big screen with the, like the whole alien invasion, and it's brilliant. Like how oblivious he is. Oh, this is a gem. I love it. This. Is. And then there we go. There's him being zapped to death. <laughs> it's just oh god. Like, there we go. That's the woman I was on about earlier. It's this hey! though. It's and those Tom three. Jones. So you got the gingerhead woman has got a plane. For whatever reason, she owns a plane. The black guy can fly the plane, and Tom Jones is just trying to save his own skin. And that's yeah. it. That's their team. Yeah, like this black actor. He's been in a lot of famous films, but I just can't remember his. I recognise his face, but his name is just bugging me. I can't remember his name either. But let's have a look. Does it say in here? Jim Brown. Yeah, you got Jim Brown. Annette Benning, Jim Brown, and Tom Jones. That's the hell. <laughs> yeah, but he's always got that iconic mustache. I I think I remember right saying that the creators of Family Guy loosely based off Cleveland Brown off him because of the mustache. Yeah, I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure that's how they based him off. But then you got. See, the actress that played Cleopatra, she was pretty attractive, but she gets killed off really easily. Like, all of the, like, slightly interesting characters die really quick, and then the uh, ones that just have, like, not much to do in the film are the ones that survive the most. Yeah, I think that's taking the mick out of Cleopatra. Yeah, that, well, it's... That, Liz, that Elizabeth Taylor was in. Yeah. Yes. There's the scene where they're oh, trying yeah. to translate... But I love the bit where like, they're trying to tweak it, and all he does is just give it a massive whack to the side, and then it suddenly works. But like I said earlier, at no point in the entire movie do they attempt to retranslate or even retry, because they just say, we come in peace, and then everyone just gets vaporised. Oh, I just don't have much to say, to be honest. I love this bit. This is a scene where you got a couple in bed where they're just doing the do, and these aliens randomly watching through the window, and there's the woman going, ah! And the guy's like, ah, oh, shit. And then they just get vaporised as well. <laughs> um, What else have we got? Oh, we got Rod's 
Diger here as like the main general, and he he's trying to shoot the aliens, and obviously they fu- they shoot black. But he's like the most typical general in this entire movie, where he keeps saying about how they should use nukes and everything, and obviously that doesn't work. But you got Jack Nicholson being the president, is like just trying to hide away from everybody because he's just scared out of his mind. And then what else have we got? Uh, yeah, quite close there. Yeah, there we go. There's the two black kids I was on about earlier that just randomly pick up one of the aliens' guns and start shooting the aliens. Yeah, like they don't understand how the guns work, but they somehow know because they've been playing like it, Space Invaders or whatever too much on there. I I don't get it. It just doesn't make sense unless it's just oh it's just there just because it's there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, but. I mean, the flying saucers as well, there was next to no attempt in design. It was so bland, these designs. It was just, they did one and then copied and pasted. Yeah, but in a way, it just because of how bland it is, wasn't that, I think that was maybe kind of the point of this film in the first place. Yeah, to a degree. I, like I say, there are so many random things off this entire thing that make next to no sense whatsoever. Like, we got Annette Benning there, and like I say, she's quite a ditzy woman. And somehow she's able to use the gun as well. <laughs> like, everybody who's, like, anybody is able to use the gun, which I don't understand, because it doesn't look anything like a gun. It just looks like they just got random exhaust pipes and glued them together and then got a propane tank. I'm to, to be honest, I think that's exactly what the designers did. Yeah. And then we got a young Tim Burton there. But this is it. Like, it's not much of a movie. It's not meant to be anything serious. It's just utter nonsense. At the end of the day, that's what this in- that's what Tim Burton does best, is just absolute randomness. There's no logic. There's no genuine well, reason behind it all. Aside from Batman, which was brilliant, in my opinion, I will forever love that film. In fairness, though, he had enough source material to try and actually make it a decent-ish movie. With Mars Attacks, it was just literally a card game that he based the entire movie on. The same thing with Pirates of the Caribbean is it was just a random ride at Disney that he based, like, five or six movies on. And this is what Tim Burton does best. It's just finding a random idea and going, we could make a movie out of this and go from there. Nonsense. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But I don't know what else to say about this movie because it's or, just... This is probably a film I don't want to get remade just because the fact that it's so bad makes it so good. You, you can't remake it. Like, if it no, was modern no, day... No. I mean, there's one scene in this movie where they go, do they have two genders like us? You wouldn't be able to have that line in today because there is no two genders anymore, unfortunately. No, but, there's about 20,000 of them. But the thing is, at the end of the day, I highly recommend this movie. If you just want to watch a movie for the sheer lunacy, for the sheer stupidity and logic of sci-fi, you just need to watch it. There's no, there's no reason why. It's just there for the sake of being there. Yeah, like Ben, like ben can't really tell you guys the reason why you should watch it. Just go watch it. It's <laughs> such a beautifully bad movie that you need to watch it. At, at least once in your life. At least oh, once. Oh, God, yes. But I don't think there's much else to say for today. Absolutely not. <laughs> so thanks for joining us for this week's episode. Jack's topic next week will be... Well, I'm looking into a few different things. Conspiracy theories, which I'm very much looking forward to, but some conspiracy theories such as the thing which is going on with Rona, which I can't talk about, but then that's too controversial and taboo. But then again, I'm going to be delving into a main topic, which I really want to get into, which we've been talking about for ages, which is we've seen a lot of um, films go into the way of movies, but instead we're going to go the other way and go from games to movies. Mm-hmm. So, as we've already seen, already tried it with um, Assassin's Creed, going into the Michael Fassbender film, which was a pff, wet fart. 
which didn't work out, and yet the 30 minute version of the actual actors was brilliant for some reason. But yeah, we're going to be going into a few different ones for that and seeing how we can uh, take some games which so far have not been made or have been made, but have been made. Could be made. reworked. Could be reworked, ones that were made very badly, and some new ones which will be new and interesting to talk about. And I'm sure this will be a fun one for any gamers out there. Okay, Doke. So that's for next week's topic. Thanks again for joining us, folks. It's been up an absolute nonsense because this is what we do most. We just rant, rave, and ramble. And as usual, stay safe, stay home, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>